I interrupt my normal sequence of videos to bring you another futures video. Not because I'm like, oh, I love futures and my channel's gonna be, no, no, no. When a, view, when a video gets 33,000 views in a week and the number one question is, Brad, can you talk a little bit more in detail about futures? I will put dividends on the side. I will put the wheel strategy on the side for just one more video, just so I can clear up what the hell, Brad, what the hell are futures? And I said inside the community tab, like, what do you, what questions do you have? And pretty much everyone's like, Brad, just explain to me like I'm a five-year-old. I will explain like what you need to know. And then I'll eliminate all the stupid fluff that like the professionals throw in there that like you really necessarily don't need to know just yet. And cheers to you. Thanks for the support on that video, guys. That was freaking awesome. And when I said I quit options, clear up real quick. I'm not quitting the wheel. I freaking love the wheel. I'm going to be trading the wheel for forever as far as I'm concerned this is just date I stopped day trading options for futures so if you didn't see that video you have no idea what the f I'm talking about I apologize I'll link it you can go check it out but let's talk exactly like futures and what the hell I'm doing I also had a ton of brokerage questions exchange questions about brokerage I'll dive into the computer and I'll show you like I'll, I'll, I promise I'll show you so futures are kind of a lot like options in a way and the word future kind of gives them a little bit of their own definition, if you will. Like when you buy a share of a stock, you own that stock at that price instantly, right there, okay? What the futures market is and was created for is to purchase some sort of commodity or asset at a future price for the price right now that's trading for. This is called the forward price, all right? So what the price is right now, that's the price you're willing to pay upon expiration. These futures contracts, like options contracts, have an expiration date. Now, this was a little bit more practical for commodities or like say you had a business, right? Or you're a farmer and you knew that your crop was gonna come out in six months. But right now, the cost of your crop might fluctuate and be volatile or something might happen, a great flood or something like that, where the price later on may differ heavily. And maybe you wanna think about your margins, how much you're gonna charge for that product, who you're gonna be selling it for. It'd be really, really nice to know what you're gonna be able to sell your commodity for in six months right now. That's essentially what the futures market was created for. It allowed buyers and sellers to agree upon a future price of a commodity right now. And then that grew into assets and other types of futures markets, which I'll show you and I'll talk about. Now for me, it's very, very simple. I don't trade commodities. I don't trade metals. I, I really just trade assets. I trade indexes. I trade the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. So that's really my area of expertise, if you will, and that's what I'm gonna show you and talk about as far as everything you need to know about how and why I'm trading those particular futures, and maybe not cotton or wheat or gold or metal or the dollar or the euro, all these other futures markets that there are. Now to do this, just like you need a broker to buy a stock, right? You need an exchange, a futures exchange, to trade futures. There are futures markets and brokers that primarily deal with just futures. I personally use a company called Tradeavate. When I was learning about futures, that's who a lot of people were using. I tried it out, it was awesome. I know there's other ones. If you're an international person, I've heard Interactive Brokers is really, really good for it. And people in the comments down below, please let me know what other brokerages or exchanges you're using to trade futures. But for me, I just use Tradeavate. I've been using it for eight, nine months now, and I really don't have any problems. It links to TradingView. It's, 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 it's just really nice. And yes, I know that you can sell options on, few, I know there's all these, but let's just talk about like the options that I was talking about, buying puts and buying calls versus what a future, like what's the difference of these two contracts? Well, essentially it's in their name. When you have an option, right? When you are the buyer of an option, you have the right, not the obligation, to purchase or sell a commodity at a given price at expiration or even before, right? You have options as the buyer. 
In the futures market, that is not true. You are obligated at expiration. If you hold that commodity, you must sell that commodity or you must receive goods on that commodity. Most of us aren't really buying them for the commodities. So what we're doing is we are buying and then selling them back or selling and buying them back. We are essentially day trading them any way you trade a stock. We want to buy low, we want to sell high. That is really the name of the game when we're using this as a day trading or even a swing trading forum. Another great thing about the futures compared to the options is you can't be assigned early, right? In an option, you can really be assigned at any time if the buyer exercises early, we know they're donkeys, but this is not gonna happen inside the futures market. Everything happens at that expiration time. Now it can be a little bit crappier because you can't do all these fancy strategies, right? There's no iron condors, there's no poor man's covered calls, right? Debit, credit spreads. It's pretty much you buy a contract and you sell a contract. So it's a little bit more if we think about this contract as like a stock share, right? We buy and sell at a price right now. There are market and limit orders just like a stock. Very, very, it's more similar to day trading a particular stock. But one of the great things about it, as I've talked about over options, is this thing pretty much trades 24 hours a day. With the exception of like Saturday into Sunday, the market opens Sunday at 6 p.m. Pretty much trades 23 hours a day. They take an hour off pretty much from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then you can jump in and trade. So right now, <clears throat> it's currently 8.15 at night on a Tuesday. I've already placed a trade. I'll show you in a second. The market is open and available for trading. When you trade something like the SPY or the NQ, or I mean, when you try the QQQs or the SPY and you wake up and there's a gap, right? It started higher or lower, or you hear like in the pre-market, the price is down. That gap and that pre-market higher low happens from the overnight session in the futures market. And like I said, we're trading this with real no intention of ever getting that commodity. Like if you want to day trade gold or crude oil, like you're never going to go collect the barrels of crude oil, right? You're just trying to settle this thing in cash. You're trying to buy low and sell high. Now, as far as the expiration on the contract, which really doesn't matter too much because we're just day trading this, right? We're not holding till expiration and your broker should let you know when it's time to roll forward. So essentially like right now, as we enter December, my co I'm trading right now the December expiration date and it has a certain volume. My broker is going to tell me when traders start to go into the next expiration and the volume at the next expiration becomes greater. So I will actually start trading March's contracts before the December expiration. In that last week leading up until the December expiration, which is the third Friday of every third month, there will really be no volume inside that contract. So the next contract, the March contract, will begin trading in probably, I would say, maybe the last week in November, first week in December. And your brokerage should notify you when the volume on the next contract exceeds the current contract that you're using. And they just call that a roll. So it's no big deal. You just go in and you just now you're just trading the same exact index, same exact chart with just a really different expiration date. In the beginning in that overlap, the volume be a little less, so there are still some stragglers in the old contract, uh, in the old expiration date, but it's it. I haven't really noticed anything as it's moved from one expiration to the next. And that third Friday of every third month is really just stock indices. So depending on what you're trading, your commodity that of your choice, that expiration is going to be different and your broker is going to tell you, but I will tell you that they have like weird symbols. You'd think it would just be like M for March, J for June, but no. March is H, June is M, September is a U, and December is a Z. And you'll see that when I show you the actual contract that I have to bring up. So I don't just bring up ES or NQ. Like right now I'm trading NQZ. And then it'll have either 2022 or just a two at the end, depending on the year. So the next one for March is going to be NQH3. So that's where those numbers and those things at the end just depend on the contract that you're trading. As far as the like margin requirements, because these are leveraged vehicles, meaning that right now, if the SPY or the ES is trading for 4800 you do not need $4,800 to purchase a contract. They're leveraged vehicles. So you need a margin account. Depending on your broker, they're going to give you an initial and a maintenance margin that you need to maintain. And as long as you have that, 
All right, the one I'm using, and I'm going to show you, is as low as $50. As long as you have that in your account, you could trade these contracts as a leveraged vehicle. And I think the last thing that really confused me was like ticks and points. The old boomers and the people trying to sound cool will use the word handles for a point. I think that was a little bit confusing to me at first because not every tick and every point for every commodity is worth the same dollar amount. So that's a little annoying, but it doesn't really matter too much to me because I really only trade these two things. So it, it goes really, you, you just pick it up really, really quick. Like it's very, very easy to understand. But I think like those are best shown in the actual brokerage themselves. So let's log in and I'll show you exactly what I'm trading, what my screen looks like, and it'll be clear. All right, guys. So here we are. This is inside Trade of Eight. And this is just how I personally have it set up. And I'll talk about the things I have and the indicators and things like that. If you're looking, guys, this looks very much like a stock chart. All right. There's nothing crazy here. It, this is not intimidating at all. Maybe some of my indicators make it a little bit more. Let's just get rid of them and then I'll add them back and I'll kind of show you the things that I keep on here, which maybe we don't need right now. But at its core, it's just a tick chart. Things I want to draw your attention to. Number one, this is a demo account. So when I make a trade right now, I just want to show you how to get in and out. This is not a real account. As at the top here, you can see as I was talking about M N Q. So this is going to be the micro E mini NASDAQ 100 futures with the December expiration in the year 2022. That's what that means. All right, so if I wanted to type this in, like let's say I didn't have this one here. So if I wanted to add another one for say, let's say I wanted to add not the micro, I just wanted to add just the mini. And I'll tell you the difference in one second. I would just type in N, Q, and then you see these all start to pop up. Z, there it is right here. Boom. Now I have this chart right here. Now the difference between the micro and the mini is that the mini is just the regular standard one, NQZ. The micro is one tenth, so it's exactly the same, but one tenth. And what that is, is it's one tenth the amount of money that you need to put up. It's also one tenth the value of tick size. So you don't, your PNL isn't that big. So let's talk, let's, let's go back to the, um, Let's go back to the micros, because if you're starting, that's really where you should start. This is the daily chart. I trade supply and demand. Shout out to Carmine Rosado. So I have my supplies there. I also keep a one hour chart, a 15 minute chart, a five minute, and a three minute. You could change all that on this broker right here. I tend to just like to skip across and, and not have them, not change it here. You could do range charts, tick charts, however you wanna trade. It's right here on the brokerage, but this isn't really about the brokerage. If I scroll down here, I'm gonna zoom in, and this is gonna get really, really zoomy. What you see is we have 11,111.25. Right now it's at five. So what we see on the NQ, and this is the NASDAQ, there are four ticks in every point. 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and a point. So it's essentially like quarters on the dollar, if you will. Now on this, one tick on the standard, all right, this is the E-mini, not the micro. On the standard, we are going to have $5 per tick, so every point, every $1 move is gonna be $20. And this can move, this is the overnight session, so it's not moving very quickly. But if we go to something like during the day, we can see that some of the moves here will go from 68 all the way down to 20. So it's a 40 point move. That's a big, big move, which is why I was trading the micros for so long. So then we just take one tenth of that, so one tick is gonna be 50 cents. So every single point is going to only be $2. And I'll show you that right now. We can see my position if I just want to buy. And this is a great thing about them too. The spreads, guys, really, really tight spreads. So there's not a lot of slippage. I know people are going to be like, oh, stop losses in the futures market. It depends on what you trade. This is The S&P 500 is the most liquid thing you could ever buy. It's not going to blow through your stop loss, especially for one or two contracts like people make it sound. 
But let's say for whatever reason, I wanted to go along here. I have two options. I can just click the chart and I can set a limit order, but I can just mark it right in. Let's just buy market and then we'll watch how the PL swings change. So right now I am in, let's zoom in here. I am in at 0.75. So we'll see that every single time it jumps 0.25, my PL is going to change by 50 cents. So right now I am at 108.75. That's going to drop me down and who is see I'm up three dollars so every point is going to be two dollars and I'm losing now here's the beauty I love it maybe I say this becomes invalid here I could put my stop boom done and I know that once I get to high day I'm going to take my profit so I just bought so I'm going to sell and then I could just sit back and watch and it really really is that nice so this becomes a lot different on say the regular. If I, let's just close this out. I'm gonna exit market and be done with this and lose $3.50 on this move. Not that big of a deal. If I just go back to that NQZ, I wanna show you how the tick value just changes a little bit more uh, on this one, how it's 10 times more and it becomes a little bit more scary. So if I were to, let's say we're gonna short now, let's see if it's gonna move for us. So now every single tick is gonna be $5 and every single point move is gonna be 20. So you can see, now I'm already up to $35. This would have been $3.50 down. Guys, just, just, just start, start with the micros. I'm telling you, start with the micros. On the ES, for those that are similar, once again, uh, into the ES, 0.25, but now the price are a little different. On the standard one, 12.50. So every point is $50. Okay, and you're like, wow, that's so much more. This doesn't move as many points as the NASDAQ does. People ask me why I trade the NASDAQ. It's a little bit better beta. It just moves a little bit more. I just tend to like it. This is the micro ES now. So if I buy in long here, I go to a tick. So now every tick we up see up here is going to be $1.25. Not that big of a deal. With most brokerages, guys, there is gonna be commissions and fees. We can see uh, those two trades. That was $10 in commissions and fees right there. So you, you, know, you kinda gotta pay to play and you also gotta pay for data because we are gonna need CME data. People ask me why I don't have level two. I get my level two from Bookmap. If you, I know you've probably seen Bookmap if you look for traders. If you want my take on it, just let me know in the comments or something like that. I will do a video about Bookmap. But that's pretty much it. Let me go to TradeAvate and show you exactly like these initial margin requirements we see up here day uh, margin, initial margin. Let me just, let me, I'll show, take a couple screenshots and I'll show you that as well. Whenever you leave your trading platform, guys, exit all positions. Oh, we just made money. What do we make? $1.25. Nice. So we just got one tick and you can see from here up to here. Great job. We just made a buck 25. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. So here guys, this is the trade of eight that I use. If we go to trading, let's go to the margins first. These are all the different things that you could trade. Like I said, gold, copper, guys, there's literally, there's, there's tons. Okay. There's so many things, sugar, commodities, cotton, cocoa, live cattle, ha have a party guys. You could trade whatever futures market you want. For me, I'm just going with, let's just go with the MES. So this is the micro. Okay. If I search this, this is the micro E mini. If I click on this, let's see if it gives me a little bit more. It does. So the per point value. Okay. $5 per point on the micro. Here once again are those expirations that we were talking about. Okay, this is March, this is July, this is September, and this is December. It tells you the point increments and it also tells you how much each tick is worth. It tells you when everything's open, it gives you fees. Here's what everyone wants to know. Brad, how much do I need to trade? You need essentially during the day session, which is standard market hours, $55. As long as you have over $55 in your account, okay, not including unrealized loss, you could trade this. If you have $56 in your account, you can open it. But as soon as you buy the contract and it goes down $1, they're going to automatically liquidate you. All right. I personally, I, I'm not going to actually, I'm not going to tell you how much you should have in there, but you need $55. Okay. To hold overnight, overnight from them is from five to six. You need $1,100, but just you're not gonna be holding, so maybe not great for swing traders. If you wanna swing trade, you're gonna just need a little bit more money. So, because this is one tenth, easy to understand. If you're gonna go with the regular, just regular S&P 500, you need $550. 
inside that. And I'll show you right now. Here's this right here. You need $500 of margin. So if you had $1,000 in your account and you wanted to trade one of these because you were ready to go for it, all right, and it was $50 a point and you were ready to handle that, if you were down $505 in that position, it's going to liquidate you. You're going to have $495 left in your account and that's going to be the end of the day. The NASDAQ is a little bit more expensive. If I go to the NQ, not that much more. We just need $1,000. And here, once again, there's a 25 cents per tick. Same expirations, $20 point. You need $1,000 if you want to trade in your account at least the NQ. If you want to go to the micro NQ, you are going to need $100. So if you have a $1,000 account, you can trade a contract and as long as your account stays over 100, they will not liquidate your position. So that's kind of like the margins that people are asking. I'm going to go to my community tab now. Let's see if I can get any other questions that I might have missed in this video. So here's the post from this morning, seven comments. Uh, Brad, you know what we need needs to be spelled out in like your options videos. I hope this helped. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff that like I can go dive deep, dive deep into, but like this will at least get you started. Uh, it would be nice to know the exact amount needed in a futures account to be able to pay for a contract or two. So now you know that information. You can multiply them by contracts. For me, I just like one contract. That's kind of all I've ever done. Um, I would like to know what the underlying we were dealing with shares of companies. Like I said, you can trade wherever you want. I'm just doing the indices. I'm doing the uh, S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Um, since the futures are 24 hours a day, is that what, yes, that's what it means. Like I said, I talked about that gap. Uh, please address the tax benefits of futures as opposed to trading options. Awesome question. Awesome, awesome question. When you buy and sell stocks, we'll start there. There's long-term capital gains tax and short-term capital gains tax. You can Google what those amounts are. It's going to change. But we know that long-term capital gains tax is taxed a lot less. If you hold a position for more than a year, that's what qualifies for long-term capital gains. When it comes to options, especially if you're day trading them, all of them are short-term capital gains tax unless maybe it's a leaps option where you held that option for more than a year. But if we're day trading, not happening. So you are getting just karate chop throw punched every single time you day trade as far as taxes are concerned. When you trade futures, even if you open and close, you day trade them, it is only taxed at 40% short-term capital gains. 60% is long-term capital gains for that day trade. So if you're doing this a lot and it's a lot of money, just that right there is going to save you a ton of money in taxes. That is the major, major difference. 60% is long-term capital gains, even for a day trade, and 40% is short-term. With options and day trading stocks, everything is short-term capital gains tax. Explains Blinkham 5. Kind of bummed that all the futures actions during the day. I know plenty of people, guys, that make a ton of money in the overnight session. It is very different, but just because it is open overnight, if you could trade during the day, stick to your regular plan. We will get back to dividends and wheel content in the next couple of videos. I hope this helped. Leave more comments. I will make more future videos every third video, right? We're doing a dividend, a wheel, future, dividend, wheel, future, and we're out of here, guys. Take it easy.